Welcome to Target 60, where we review and rate computer hardware by a new metric, playability. Today we are taking a look at the newly released $60 Athlon X4950 for the AM4 platform and comparing it to its price rival, the Pentium G4560. So spoiler, I began this testing quite hopeful that the four cores on the X4950 would really separate it from the G4560's two cores with hyperthreading. And I'm disappointed to say that this is not the case. We saw anywhere from a 30 to 50% decrease in performance across our test suite, and honestly, the i3-2120 from our eSports test system might have been a better comparison chip for this CPU if all you're looking for is playability measures. Having spoiled the conclusion, let's take a closer look at the hardware we'll be comparing today. Today we'll be comparing the playability of the venerable Pentium G4560 and the recently released AM4 Socket X4950 Athlon. Both are priced around the $60 mark, but the Athlon is available on AMD's new AM4 platform which promises to be around for several years, whereas the G4560 is on the now defunct LGA1151 platform. So if you were to build either of these systems today, the best CPU you could ever put on the LGA1151 platform is the i7-7700K, and with the AM4 platform, well the sky's the limit until AMD retires the socket. The G4560 is based on the Kaby Lake architecture and features two cores with hyper-threading enabled, for a total of four threads clocked at 3.5 GHz. The multiplier on the CPU is locked, so there is no opportunity to overclock it today or in the future. The 950 is based on a revised version of the Bulldozer architecture, which is called Bristol Ridge, and delivers four real cores clocked at 3.5 GHz with a max single core turbo boost of 3.8 GHz and a max four core turbo boost of 3.7 GHz as seen in our testing. The multiplier on the CPU is unlocked, but we didn't have much luck overclocking our chip. Something else odd is that the AMD chose to lock the memory frequency on the CPU to 24 MHz, so we were forced to run our benchmarks at those frequencies. For our testing today, we paired both CPUs with 16 GB of RAM and the 1050 Ti we saw previously paired with our Ryzen 1800X and set about benchmarking the CPUs to our 2017 playability test suite. I tested the G4560 first, and it did pretty well, and I would happily recommend this chip to a budget builder. Then I tested the X4950, and I honestly thought something was wrong. The frame rates were noticeably lower, so I double checked the drivers, loaded up CPU-Z as well as Task Manager to watch the usage and the core clocks. I updated the BIOS to the latest Agiza 1.006B and nothing improved. It turns out that the IPC performance of the 950 is really lacking and a huge bottleneck for modern games. Even with its four real cores, the two core G4560 pounds it in every single game. Here we can see Grand Theft Auto V with the G4560 and the X4950 performance side by side, and it's rather evident that while both CPUs are nearing 100% usage, the usage for our video card, the 1050 Ti, is noticeably down on the 950, and this is because the 950 cannot process the game's data fast enough for the 1050 Ti to draw the frames, so what we know is a very capable video card is left to twiddle its thumbs. I wanted to see just how much behind the 950 was in the G4560, so I recorded the GPU usage, and well... The X4950 falls on its face, with only 42% GPU utilization compared to the G4560's 72%, a 30% performance gap which is almost 70% of the base performance of the X4950. It's like we're missing a whole CPU here. The story is much the same with our other games, including Doom, which saw 96% utilization on the G4560 and only 65% utilization on the 950. I wanted to get some more clarity on this, so I ran the Civilization VI AI test, which benchmarks CPU performance, and we saw the 950 fall 50% behind the G4560 here, 
being able to process a turn every 32 seconds compared to the G4560's 21 seconds. And to get an even better picture, I ran an older Star Swarm benchmark test, which really stresses a CPU's ability to track and render data for up to 6,000 objects. And again, the 950 fell 38% behind the G4560 here, being able to average only 72 frames per second compared with the G4560's 116. These two separate tests are excluded from the final playability score, as that's reserved for the five games in our test suite but they help to highlight the disparity between these two $60 CPUs. Overall, this channel cannot recommend anyone purchase the Athlon X4950. It's a stupid purchase even factoring in the future-proofing the AM4 platform provides, as you are sacrificing so much today that the future value of investment doesn't make economic or playable sense. So how much worse is the 950 than the G4560 under the playability definition? Well, by the playability measure, 62% in fact, with the G4560 scoring an overall target playability score of 91% at 129 frames, where the X4950, and brace yourselves, managed a 57% playability score at 79 frames. Honestly, these CPUs really aren't even in the same class as the 950 fails to live up to the playability definition. The X4950 is a better competitor to the 10-year-old i3-2120 we use in our eSports system, which can be had for a lot less, whereas the G4560 nearly matches the Ryzen 1800X in terms of playability. But the extra cores of the Ryzen CPU actually contribute to improved workspace performance, an area we don't cover in these videos, but is important for some users. It will be interesting when we finally complete our test of the 7700K to see where that falls on this chart, but until then, don't buy the Bristol Ridge based X4950. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoyed this review. Subscribe to our channel to see more, and don't forget to like this video.